may have been everyone's least favorite Robin, but he's gonna make everyone pay for it as the Red Hood. It's him, Batman. We didn't do nothing. Well, we all know that's a lie. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we will explore the comic book origins of the Red Hood. As we'll soon see, there have actually been two Red Hoods. Neither one possesses superpowers, but the second is exceptionally well-trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat and excels in physical feats. And both have been known to cause trouble for Batman. I got this shot from a snitch. He says that this guy's been making some serious moves. As with most comic book characters, there are often reimaginings and different versions to a character's past. For the first Red Hood, we have chosen to primarily follow the storyline which unfolded in 1951's Detective Comics number 168. For the second Red Hood, we have chosen to follow the storyline which unfolded in 2006's Batman Annual number 25, which was expanded upon in 2010's Red Hood The Lost Days numbers 1 to 6, and 2012's Red Hood and the Outlaws number 0. The first Red Hood was a mysterious criminal with a scarlet hood that completely covered his face. He was almost apprehended by Batman, but escaped by diving into a vat of chemicals and then disappeared. Wait! I'm not a crook, I swear! Ten years later, while teaching a criminology class, Batman challenged his students to look into what happened to the villain. As they did so, the Red Hood suddenly reappeared and reassumed his criminal career. This turned out to be a petty thief who had donned the disguise after subduing the real Red Hood. By the way, that real Red Hood turned out to be none other than the Joker. Jumping ahead several decades, when the mantle of Robin, Batman's sidekick, had been passed from Dick Grayson to Jason Todd. In the famous 1988 storyline, A Death in the Family, the Joker brutally murdered Jason Todd just when the boy had tracked down his long-lost mother. But the dead don't stay buried in the world of comic books. In 2005, a new Red Hood arose to create chaos in Gotham, and it turned out that this Red Hood was actually a resurrected Jason Todd. An anomaly in the DC Universe caused by Superboy resulted in Jason coming back to life, but he was badly damaged, little more than a zombie who responded strictly through instinct. Found by Talia al Ghul, daughter of Batman's foe Ra's al Ghul or Ra's al Ghul, we're not getting into that here, Jason was given tender care. Eventually, against her father's commands, Talia dunked Jason into the Lazarus Pit, which has the ability, as some of you may know, to restore the mostly dead back to life. Jason was now truly reborn. However, the process also darkened his soul and brought the worst of him to the surface. When he discovered that Batman had not killed the Joker to avenge his death, Jason became Batman's enemy and adopted the Red Hood as his new identity. When I wore that number, it was classy. More flashy made her D than motorcycle fetish. Oh, these kids today. A 2010 miniseries went into great detail about Jason's rebirth. Readers learned that Talia al Ghul had acted on Jason's behalf because she hoped that restoring Jason might move Batman to care more for her. But readers also saw how she worked in the background to try to tame Jason after the Lazarus Pit brought out his demonic side. Slyly manipulating him, she introduced him to underworld figures who would give him the training he would need to go up against Batman. Ah, oh, you and your gadgets. You're not the only one with toys. Yet, at the same time, she was subtly encouraging his good side to break through. As a result, when Jason had the chance to kill the Joker, he failed to do so. Okay, so what's the plan? Slumber party? Charades? A little later, after Batman killed her father, Talia encouraged Jason to attack Batman. Not to kill him, but to punish him by taking over Gotham. This, in turn, led to Jason's career as the Red Hood, which eventually veered off into heroics rather than just villainy. With the launch of DC's New 52 project, Red Hood's origin was revised yet again. Fans learned more about Jason's not-so-good father and drug-addicted mother, and how they affected his childhood. But more surprisingly, they learned that the Joker was responsible for Jason's career. He knew that when Dick Grayson struck out on his own, the Batman would need a new sidekick. He carefully plotted and arranged for that sidekick to be Jason Todd, solely so that he could then kill him and cause Batman untold grief and guilt. Well, there you have it. He's still at rest. No, he isn't. 
That's not flesh. The Joker couldn't foresee Jason's resurrection, of course, but he was thrilled that the lad took on his identity of the Red Hood, even if Jason did eventually fall back on his good guy ways. While the first Red Hood was clearly a villain, the second version of the character has had a much more complicated and ambiguous path. It's that complexity and the character's strong connection to the Batman mythos that makes Red Hood such a compelling and intriguing character. Look at you, Mr. Hood. Or do you prefer red? You know, I used to wear an outfit a lot like that. Mine was more flashy Mater D than motorcycle fetish. Are you a fan of the ambivalently heroic Red Hood? I wouldn't undersell it. It took a lot of work to bring about our reunion. For more comic book origins, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You've been great, ladies and germs, but we gotta go. <laughs>